So I will call to order the uh, April 16th uh, meeting of the Batavia Park Board of Commissioners. Uh, shall I please call the roll? Riley. Here. Dorsey. Present. Tillman. Here. Gray. Here. Calhoun. Here. Please stand for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any items to be added, removed, changed on the agenda? There is not. Okay. All right. So I would entertain a motion to establish the consent agenda as follows. Approval of the meeting minutes of the regular board meeting of March 19th, 2019. Approval of the minutes of the special board meeting of April 2nd, 2019. Approval of the paid expenditures, expense approval report, investment summary, income statement, and purchases. So moved. Second. Ooh, oh, motion by go. Tillman, second by Gray. Mm. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Shall I please call the roll? Tillman. Aye. Gray. Aye. Bradley. Aye. Dorsey. Aye. Callahan. Aye. Motion carries. So I entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as established. So moved. Second. Motion by Tillman, second by Gray. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item on the agenda is um, matters from the commissioners. Anyone? Oh, we're skipping matters from the public? Yeah, well, I don't see any public. Those ones. are our presentations. Yes, we have uh, presentations, so. Sorry. What about the Easter egg hunt? We did very uh, uh, good at um, uh, Rotolo. I bet the uh, Park District folks represented themselves very well. And yep. I think the people had a good time. The weather was probably one of the nicest days in the last, Boy, you know. Did yeah. it last yeah. longer than two minutes? Next or? day it snowed. <laughs> Like a minute and a half to it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we found a lot, of new, up, yeah. a lot yeah. of new ground keepers for the parks department. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but it was good, like every year. I mean, how can you miss, you know, but uh, it was great. You did, you did a great job, and the Lions Club was out there, and they did a terrific job, too. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Moving on. Um, Batavia Parks Foundation, any update? Uh, actually, uh, a representative was going to be here tonight, uh, but since they're not here, I'll just mention that they are actively recruiting. Um, they did have two board members resign, so those of you that are watching at home on Batavia Access Television, um, please, 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 if you are interested in getting into volunteer service, what better way to do it than to join the Batavia Parks Foundation? Um, you can get a hold of the Parks Foundation through their website, um, BataviaParksFoundation.org, and um, and they have they will have somebody reach out to you and give you an application along with their board member expectations. But um, it is a wonderful group, and they are a terrific revenue stream for the Batavia Park District. Great, thank you. Uh, next item is Fox Valley Special Rec Association. Yep, I would like to actually bring. Carolyn Nagel, the executive director of Fox Valley Special Recre Recreation Association to the stand. I figured it'd be silly for me to give the update when we've got royalty in our presence. <laughs> um, it's just gonna be short. I mean, as you can see, see, I didn't bring my PowerPoint with me and everything else. If you get off easy tonight. Um, I did threaten the St. Charles Park District Board a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if any of you know Jim Cook, but he's always having some little fun comment to say, so when they congratulated me, they said, Carol, do you have any farewell remarks? I said, are you talking about anybody specific I should be addressing this to? And he wanted me to get back with Jim. I said, well, I pulled out a big bag. I said, I can have this nice little presentation for you, Jim. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't have a big one for you. Um, it, it's um, kind of news from the, both the association and the, the foundation perspective. Um, of course, with the association, it's a, a very exciting time, me. both from, from, from my perspective of having been involved for 27 years with the association and see where it um, has grown and where I get to leave it. And I'm so thrilled. And I know it gets officially voted on in, on our meeting next week, but the board has made the best decision they could ever make in hiring Alex Engelhart as a new executive director. Alex started with us as an intern 13 years ago, and I have never seen anyone 
always be as eager to learn and take on new responsibilities. She's had every job in that association with the exception of the business manager, the HR manager, and my position. But she's always been right there to help and however and, and eager to learn. And she will take the association to many new exciting direction. And she is well respected by um, both the, the communities of our of mental health workers and, and physical health workers and our special education um, uh, professionals and AID staff. And most importantly, she's very well respected by our staff and, and very, very well liked and, and, and of course our participants. So congratulations to the board. Um, you will find it a very exciting time to work with Alex in, in the future. So. Um, and she'll have some fun presentations for you, I know. <laughs> They're interactive. <laughs> um, some of the, just a quick highlight, as I look back and, and, and some of our program areas that we did work on kind of um, very actively in last year, our adult programs are just unbelievably growing. Um, you probably remember when I was here last time we talked about our adult day services that we do in collaboration with AID and our fifth program opened across the street. Um, that we are doing with AID. So there's a potential of serving over 145 different people in that those five stars program. The attendance isn't always quite there because there's a lot of different challenges that, that face those individuals, but we are seeing about an 83% attendance of those individuals that can be served with that. And that's five days a week from basically 8.30 till three each day. In addition to that, the another component that we do independently is our daybreak program. And we're just, opened the third one this year, and the third one opened up at the St. Charles Park District Sportsplex, where they have given up, no, not given to us, <laughs> we, are, we are paying for, but dedicated space for that particular program, as well as our utilization in the evening <coughs> weekend, which has really opened up some doors for us in the northern section of our service area. And we're going to be opening the fourth daybreak program, and that will be more in the southern part of our district area, so that we'll have two up north and two up south, which really helps the families um, reduce their driving time to get their family members there. And these are for the, the people who have left the, the supported special education system, don't have jobs, many may not ever have jobs, their parents are still working, and it's kind of the adult version of childcare is basically what it is. It's much greater than that, I'm simplifying it, but that need is there and it continues to grow. Over 50% of our services, and we presented the budget last month to the board, is going to our adult day service program. So the adult area is, is, is huge and it's not gonna get any smaller because those the kids leaving, the graduating from special education services are gonna come to us because they don't have the jobs and they're gonna need those services. So it's, um, in there, and there's all different types of ability challenges within that program. You'll see our higher level ones out doing volunteer work. They're bringing food to the Hesed uh, House, or they're doing things with helping to, to stuff eggs, and they're making cookies for the fire department. They're out and about doing things, giving back to the community as a very much service organized group. They're also getting fitness activities, they're getting nutrition, they're learning how to cook, they're doing all the life skills, which is hopefully helping them make. Um, some skill development that's going to make them available to move to work and live with a, a group that's not always so totally dependent on a high rate, high staffing ratio. So we're just seeing that, that area grow significantly. And our most exciting event that happened, and, and um, not only event, is a program, our sensory room that the foundation established as a major goal um, two and a half years ago. There was, we were trying to get funds dedicated to be able to support the cost of putting all the equipment in place for the sensory room. We had, had received a, a, a $13,000 contribution from the 100 women who care in the Geneva area. So we, we dedicated that money and we wanted to build that to be able to continue the growth of that. Last year we were pleasantly surprised with the 100 women in the Fox uh, River Valley area came forth with another approximately $15,000. In December, the equipment was ordered from Flag House and Snoozling. Um, it was installed um, in late December. The Flag House staff came out and trained our staff in January, and our first services were offered in the, in the sensory room in the first part of February. Tomorrow night, we're hosting an open house for the 100 women who care groups to come in and see firsthand and experience the sensory room as our kids and our adults are starting to do. And none of you have ever seen a sensory room. It, it's just amazing. There is the newest feature that we just got two weeks ago called the Gesture Tech. It, it projects 
back to a mat on the floor. And I had only seen two before we went ahead with ordering this, but we have 75 different options that this projection can make. One of the cool things, the first thing I thought was that it's mat, like you're walking through a forest, so there's leaves on the floor, and as you walk on this mat, and the projection is not in effect, the leaves are, are spreading away from you as you walk. It's a basketball game. The kids lay on the floor and they push this basketball on this mat and they can shoot it into a basket. I mean, it's not, it's all on this mat. It's not up in the air or anything. Or they step into water and the water ripples. There are so many different things in there. It's just unbelievable. And that <laughs> is extremely popular. It is the most expensive part of the equipment. But there are different lights. There's the, the beanbag chair. One of our adults with severe autism, his parents have struggled throughout his entire life for him to sleep. He doesn't sleep. He's almost awake, almost 24 hours, but it's very hard to get him to settle down. He came into the sensor room. The staff got him into the, 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 the big, the, you know, comfy chair. The lights were on, and he fell asleep. Mm -hmm. Never happened before. Mm -hmm. And then a little girl comes in, and she's looking at the light, and she's like, oh, it's magic. It's magic. Aww. So it's doing something for everyone that comes in there. So I invite you all, we're going to be doing some other open houses and virtual tours. So when, when you get the information about that, it'll probably be after April 30th. <laughs> so I'm not going to be here to invite you to it, but I'm sure Alex will. But go on our, our website and look at some of the things that they're doing. I left tonight and they were just finishing up some sessions with the kids. It's an amazing, amazing um, addition to our services. Um, after that, our exciting news with our barbecue. Um, you know, we do the two events, the Northern Nights, and Northern Nights by far generates more funds for us. Um, last year, our barbecue was a little bit down. We had fewer sponsors. We had some other challenges with sales. And we were, we netted about $10,000 last year, which is our lowest in a very, very long time. Our goal this year was to get it back up to the $30,000 area. I'm happy to tell you that we've met at least 30. All the details aren't quite in. We want to release all the specifics to the foundation board before we get it all out there. But we've met our goal of 30,000, and hopefully it'll be a little bit more. Awesome. I have complimented our foundation manager. She really hustled. We had over $12,000 in sponsorship for the barbecue. We never had more than probably five. So she really hustled that and got uh, continuation sponsorships for the year to involve both the barbecue and the Northern Knights. So she's sitting nicely in the situation right now where she's got money already set aside for the, for the Northern Knights event. Um, just in, in closing, I just want to thank this board for 27 years and the staff. And I think Jim and Eric are probably the two that go back with me the whole time that I've been here. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I'm so you guys started, older than you guys. But. You started when you were 10, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were 10 and 2 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, Batavia's always been there for us in, in various different ways. I remember the, the, the pumpkin or the, the, the Halloween thing that we started with you many, many years ago on the river walk. Right. And um, it got a little bit too big for us. <laughs> you guys took it out and went with it. But we worked together with that. We worked together with a lot of different things. Your support has always been there. And it certainly made my job as a director um, very easy to do. Because if we, without you, we couldn't be. And we, we truly appreciate all your support. And I truly appreciate it. I've met so many friends and colleagues throughout my whole career. And I consider all of you to be those friends. So thank you so much for Thank you. 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 Thank Acknowledging great customer service and the programs offered, and a thank you note from Tri City Family Services for a donation for their fundraiser gift basket. Next item announcements. Katie, do you want to take this one? It'd be my pleasure. All right. 
Eight Batavia organizations are teaming up to inspire community members to preserve their personal, family, and community history in conjunction with National Preservation Week this April 22nd through the 27th. You can check out all the amazing programs such as a historic pub crawl and a special presentation by Mayor Schelke and um, so much more actually. So you can see all the details and all the program information and offerings uh, and also register at Batavia Historical Society org. And then also speaking of Batavia Preservation Week, um, the Batavia Park District is hosting a new competitive and educational special event called the Batavia Road Rally on April 27th, so it'll end the Preservation Week. Uh, Batavia is the oldest city in Kane County, and with all the history comes a lot of opportunity. Uh, we're challenging Batavians to compete against each other through a series of hints, clues, and activities. You can earn points along the route as you test your knowledge of Batavia history and your navigation skills of the city. Uh, the event fee is actually charged per team, uh, which is just $10. And so it's just as many people that can safely fit in your vehicle. And the road rally check-in begins at 1.30 p.m. at the Eastside Community Center, but pre-registration is requested. So we hope you will join us in an epic excursion of Batavia history, and maybe your team will be crowned one of our winners. And then kids of all ages are invited to put their imaginations into gear as they climb aboard and ex explore an assortment of vehicles at our popular Touch a Truck Day on Friday, May 10th from 10 a.m. to noon at the Eastside Community Center. Kids can climb in and around a possibly a fire truck, a trolley, police car, crane, and much more at this free hands-on family event. Um, and in case of inclement weather, the event will take place on uh, Friday, May 17th at the same place and same time. So parental supervision is recommended and concessions will be available for a small fee and we encourage you to bring your camera. And then also don't forget to gear up for summer fun at Hall Quarry Beach. Season passes are available at a discounted rate uh, now through May 24th. You can stop by the Civic Center or the Eastside Community Center during regular business hours to purchase your passes and enjoy some summer savings. Um, and just a reminder, the quarry actually opens on Saturday, May 25th, just around the corner. So for more information about all of our special events and programs coming up, um, you can visit us at bataviaparks.org or give us a call at 630 879-5235. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Thanks. Uh, next item on the agenda is staff reports. So first, any uh, <coughs> updates for staff for the board? I'd like to be Mitch Bolin for a second. Mm -hmm. Mitch is actually in Vegas right now enjoying himself. So uh, I will be our director of finance. Uh, the audit field work was completed last month. And Sikich will be at the May board meeting to present the comprehensive <coughs> annual financial report. Um, just a reminder to the board, the interview questions were sent to your Park District email, um, and the auditors have requested that the board complete an interview related to internal controls, if you haven't done so already. Uh, Mitch and I have also begun planning for the 2020 budget process. Ay, ay, ay. It's only April, and we're looking at Didn't 2020. did we just have a meeting about right. that? <laughs> um, our vision is 2020. Uh, so we have a draft calendar that's been created to ensure that we meet all the legal deadlines. So we'll be working with the board on securing dates for special board meetings like we have in the past, and staff will be next in the know. That's it for Mitch. That's it for Mitch. <laughs> I had uh, two items that I wanted to uh, uh, fill you in on about our uh, Depot Museum. Uh, last week, uh, we uh, did... Uh, three interviews, four interviews, I'm sorry, uh, for the curator position. So that process is underway. Very much thanks to uh, our HR director, uh, Amy Sorrow, and to museum director, Jennifer Putzier, for uh, they really uh, led that process. Um, we are still in that process, so there isn't any real uh, information yet. Um, there isn't a clear choice uh, happening. Um, and. The other thing is that um, the Victory Garden is going to be over for the season here pretty soon. Um, and Jennifer wanted to make sure that uh, everyone knew that we are going to be uh, doing the planting and that uh, volunteers of all kinds would be uh, very much appreciated. Uh, if you like gardening right downtown, it was an incredible success last year and we hope to repeat that this year in 2019. So thank you. Thank you. 
Well, I don't know if it's a blessing or, or just the gift of a challenge, but I, where else can you get uh, almost eight inches of snow <laughs> and then mowing in the same way? <laughs> yeah. 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 Only here. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> uh, um, so with that, we're uh, deep into uh, the preseason uh, rituals of getting the quarry ready. The guys have been down there. Uh, uh, we're arranging to uh, regrade all the sand on the beach. And uh, we were down there today cleaning things up and getting ready for that. Um, so it's just it's eating up most of our time uh, with the facility staff. The guys are out in the parks uh, being busy. But uh, other than that, the guys did a great job during the snow event on Sunday, um, able to provide all that support. And uh, their hard work was much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, like Kevin said earlier, we had a great Easter egg hunt and dog Easter egg hunt on uh, Saturday. Uh, it was Beth Ann's first event that she was in charge of and did an awesome job. Uh, had over 70 dogs at the dog Easter egg hunt. So wow. it was a great turnout. It was That's a record. So yeah, it was very fun. Was fun. <laughs> and uh, the little kids knew to pick up the Tootsie Rolls versus what wasn't a Tootsie Roll. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sensory, so. sensory exploration. Let's hope that everybody followed that protocol. <laughs> Uh, we're very excited that Camp Kaleidoscope has a new location. So happy to announce that that would be at Funway this summer. Um, so it is going to be the same structured camp that Camp Kaleidoscope was. So we'll still have crafts and activities, still have time for outside green space, going on field trips in the quarry. Uh, we'll also have some perks added to it. So uh, two days a week we'll have uh, amenities of roller skating, one day a week bowling, and one day a week mini golf. Mm, so that will awesome. be added into the camp experience for our campers this summer. What's the age range on that? That is first you grade can't go through. Dang. Uh, <laughs> 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 At least Sarah got that. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. Um, and then coming up next weekend, so April 26th through uh, the 28th, we have our first softball tournament coming up. It's full for 12U. Um, so we'll be hosting that. Softball is going well. We have 13 rec teams. Um, we have around 170 kids signed up. So getting awesome. busy with practices and games starting. Awesome. That's about it. Thank you. Awesome. Um, so I'm excited to announce that we have completed our 2018 annual report, as well as the summer brochure, which includes all of our summer camp information, and that will get mailed out to residents starting the week of April 22nd. So you guys should see those in your mailboxes very soon. So be on the lookout for those. And then uh, we've also been doing some interviewing of our own in the marketing department. Uh, we've been looking for our summer marketing intern, and I'm actually super excited to announce that we did make an offer this afternoon, and it was accepted. And so we will be um, welcoming Sarah Hager uh, to our team this May 20th through the end of July, and she's actually um, a Batavia High School alum. She currently attends the University of Iowa. She was also a valedictorian of her, her class last year, um, incredibly talented talented young, um, young professional with a lot of experience, and so she'll be joining us this summer in the marketing department. So I uh, hope you'll join me in welcoming her. We're um, hoping to have her join us at the May Park Board meeting or the June Park Board meeting so you can meet her. And then also in honor of our 50th anniversary and uh, also National Bike Month, which is the month of May, uh, we are going to be offering a Explore Your Parks Challenge this summer that will be good through May through the end of July. We're encouraging residents to uh, go check out a lot of the different park sites here in Batavia, and we'll have some activity challenges for you as well. And you can turn that in uh, to win some really neat prizes, and we're going to have a really amazing grand prize that we'll be announcing soon. Mm -hmm. So be on the look dun, out dun, for dun. that. Yeah. So that's all I got. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just one question. Um, at the bottom of your uh, uh, report, there's a poster or something. Is that going to be on the side of a building or uh, is that just something? Oh. 
So the, uh, at, I'm sorry, it wasn't at the uh, park board meeting last month. I oh, okay. No. Well, perfect. No. <laughs> We're on the same page. Everybody knows that. Uh, so <laughs> we've been working with local artist Joshua Schultz on some sketches for the mural at the Hall Quarry Beach. And so um, last month we showed the three uh, possible sketches and then uh, kind of which one we were leaning towards. And so uh, we shared it with staff. Um, and uh, that was the final design that Josh came up with that he's actually going to be painting into three panels that will get installed at the quarry, uh, hopefully the week of May 20th. Great. Thanks. Yeah, so I hope you guys like it. We it's bulldoze fun. the bulldozer out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It looks yeah. great. Yes. It's, great. <laughs> it's very happy. Very postcard-like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, um, board, any other comments on staff reports? Okay, um, next item is the executive director's report. Excellent. I always feel like a meteorologist pointing back at the screen and <laughs> trying not to look at the screen while I talk about it. Lights, camera action, all right. Well, so this report is gonna completely focus on Parks and Recreation. Yes, I'm talking with my hands. Staff always teases me about it. Um, so we're going to start with Parks. And this is at the Eastside Community Center. And this is actually a snapshot of what it looks like right now. We've got the construction fencing up. And you can see a beautiful shade structure, uh, which is designed to handle all weather. So it can handle the snow. Um, it, it's at just That's right. That's been tested. <laughs> Gorgeous. And um, right now, the, the retaining wall hasn't been painted, but it's going to actually match Shannon. <clears throat> so it's going to be absolutely gorgeous when finished. And so um, this is the playground that will also be open for New Horizons Preschool uh, during certain hours, but then open to the public outside of those hours. So we are extremely excited um, that this project is going to be picking up its pace next week. And uh, we're anticipating it being available to the public sometime in May. Okay. Weather pending, right? As long as it doesn't keep snowing. Uh, this is another look. I know it looks like we're behind bars, but, um, but just to give you an idea, you know, with the, the new staircases, the retaining wall, just it looks very classy. Yeah, so like much that. better. And yeah. amazing. And uh, the landscaping is still yet to be filled in here, but again, that's going to come with time. And um, we are going to have the exterior of the Eastside Community Center uh, pressure washed, so it'll have a more pristine look than it does right now. So that way it'll all kind of look refreshed. Mm. Um, we're talking camps, we're switching gears now, uh, going into recreation. Uh, the top picture is at Funway Entertainment Center, as Brittany mentioned in her report, uh, that we did actually interview several different locations. Uh, we researched um, many locations, mm -hmm. and uh, Funway came out on top. What a perfect place to have camp. And um, so here's their bowling alley on the top picture. And when you turn, uh, do a half turn, if you pivot, this is what you see behind you. So the bowling alley is, if you're looking forward, this is behind you. And up above is a mezzanine, and that's where uh, camp is going to be held. There's actually a kitchen area, um, so that way lunches can be prepared. There's an elevator, so it's ADA accessible. Um, so, and what's nice too is that with Funway, we were able to package in uh, the mini golf and the bowling, so that way the kids don't feel like they're inside the Funway but can't do anything. So, that would be sure, that's great. And because when we walked outside, when we were assessing the different situations, the different locations, we realized there isn't much green space or open space outside of Funway to play. And, you know, Parks and Recreation, we're all about playing, especially for camp. So what we did was we took a little hike. It's a five minute walk. It's not that big of a deal. We walked over to the VFW and we're gonna do a bartering with the VFW. We're gonna mow this area for them in exchange for having it for free this summer. Oh, great. And so the VFW is actually, this is the Island View Banquets, a banquet hall that they're actually leasing out or looking for someone to lease it out. And um, But the VFW has given us permission to use their land behind. So there's plenty of open space, beautiful days. It's right, it's close to the river, but it's not right next to the river where there are any safety or hazards. Geese, Eric, how do you hear those? Pardon me? Geese down there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just a few? Just a few. Yeah. <laughs> the, the tractors will scare them away. That, those down there don't seem to be okay. 
They're more afraid of people than okay. the ones down the river walk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the ones down the river walk get fed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So we are super excited to enter into this partnership with the VFW. So I will be turning to the park board through electronic vote because uh, Dirk has been working feverishly on many things for us, but that was one thing we couldn't get in time for this meeting. Sure. So I'll ask for electronic vote for approval with the board um, with the Spartan arrangement. Uh, this you're probably wondering what happened to this playground. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> this is Memorial Park or Jones Meadow Park. Excuse me. Did you miss my yes man? No man. Sorry, this is Jones Meadow Park. Um, and this actually, if you look close enough, you'll actually see the volunteers from the Kids Around the World uh, Association. And they are dismantling our playground. So they're volunteers that are disassembling the playground and it's going to be shipped to a country where the children need playgrounds. And we'll be notified in the next six months to a year on which, like, where that playground ends up being. But when you think about it, you know, our playground replacement program is every 15 years. And in third world countries, they really don't have any standards for playground equipment. So what is old for us, you know, safety wise, um, tends to be brand new for them. So they are very appreciative and they usually send us pictures of it once it's installed. Um, we actually do have a map outside of our civic center in our hallway, uh, which shows all of the different countries that our playgrounds have ended up around the world. It's pretty fascinating. And moving right along to the road rally, um, I'd like to encourage people, well, be cool if the park work, get a team together, um, but to try the road rally, uh, this is an educational and fun event. Uh, Marmion could get a team together. Fox Valley Special Rec could get a team together. Uh, it's only $10 a car, um, but it's a great way to really uh, rally around Batavia and get to know Batavia, Batavia even better than you already do. So this was the before picture of the Civic Center gym. So if you remember this, actually this flooring uh, had been in this particular area for 30 years since Jim and Eric have been at this park district. Um, this was for gymnastics. It actually was a spring floor and the spring portion of the floor was removed. And so this is just the mat that's sitting on top of it. But for 30 years, this has been covered. Ready for that? Okay, so now at this point, we're just gonna remove the mat so you get to see what it looks like underneath. So you can see there's, there is some damage uh, to the wood the wood boards, but um, we actually changed the dates end of May. We're going to be refinishing the floor and with the hopes that if there is leftover funds in the CDP, we may be looking at the park board to maybe we can replace the floor this fiscal year because we do have significant savings from the CDP. Um, and right now, we, we haven't seen the, quite the Eastside Community Center project come to fruition yet, but um, or next year we'd be asking for it in the budget. Yeah, we, we went in, the guys went in and they uh, cleaned those darker areas that you know were the wear spots mm -hmm. around the spring floor. So now it, 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 it's pretty much blended uh, and it will look way better than once we get a fresh <coughs> clear coat on it. So what is that machine? Pardon me? What's that machine? It's a, a man, personal man lift. We're using that to work on, uh, we changed the lights to oh. LED. Okay, I thought it was some special floor thing. I thought it was some special floor thing. I was like, whatever it's doing, it uh -oh. looks cool. No, it, and to your point with LED, we're saving a lot in energy, mm -hmm. and it looks just so much better in there. Yes. And then right. in Eric's uh, facilities, men have also um, repainted the, the sides of the walls, actually mm -hmm. the other side, but, um, because all the way around, we touched it up, I painted the east wall. This one. Mm -hmm. Yep. It looks great. Okay, so great it's amazing. Uh, we've had a lot of staff say, wow, we didn't realize how much space there was. Yeah, okay. Like, you know, Kathy has been, you know, one third of the yeah, gymnasium right. has been mm -hmm. her fitness center, and she's not used to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to, she can actually host it right in the middle if she wants, and she's still not used to it. <laughs> but, um, and the pickleballers obviously really like it, so they can't wait until we refinish it. Um, in a few weeks so that they can get their lines down and start playing. So stay tuned. Um, I just, we couldn't just talk about the Easter egg hunt without showing some pictures of it. So in case you didn't get a chance to get out there, there were a lot of high fives from the bunny. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the Lions Club and the Batavia Interfaith, Interfaith Food Pantry. Um, 
a lot, as you can see there, of food awesome. was raised for this event, or was brought in for this event. Um, it's an incredible partnership that we have in the community, and we certainly couldn't do this event without that kind of goodwill support. And what a cute picture of the dog and the bunny. <laughs> what are you? I don't, I don't quite recognize that smell. <laughs> but the doggy yeah, again, was also an extreme success. And um, you know, I, based on what I've heard, it's been record numbers, especially with the dogs. But um, with the weather, and I think you know, there's so much competing for people's attentions right now. A lot of churches offer egg hunts. Um, a lot of restaurants are starting to offer egg hunts. Um, but I think the park district can be still, you know, are the number one recreational provider when it comes to the pictures on social media. Both of those are fantastic. Yeah. They're really good. And that's a wrap. Great report. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. So. Uh, next item on our agenda is a very special item, which is the recognition of for the retirement of Carolyn Nagel. Mm -hmm. I hope you bring your waterproof mask here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can make her blush like that. <laughs> well, I am going to make you blush because I'm going to talk about where you've been and where you are now, and you know where you're going. So, um, <laughs> Carolyn Nagel is a living legend. Her career in the world of special recreation began when she graduated from Illinois State University with a Bachelor of Arts in Recreation and Park Administration. In 1981, Carolyn was named Executive Director for NSSRA and began her 10-year career. During this time, she touched many lives in the northern suburbs. You really worked your way up and down the suburbs here. In 1984, Carolyn graduated from Indiana University Executive Development Program and completed her master's in public administration from the University of Illinois at Chicago in 1991. Not only did Carolyn earn a bachelor's and master's, she committed to earning the certifications of CPRP and CTRS. Earning her CEUs to keep her certifications proves her dedication to keeping current in the world of special recreation. When the Fox Valley Special Recreation Association Board of Directors hired Carolyn back in 1993, she found her forever home. So Carolyn has been with Fox Valley Special Rec for 27 years and in the field for 43 years. And never once wavered. Carolyn has been recognized statewide by her peers since starting the NSSRA. In 1981, she was named the Outstanding Young Woman. In 1981, that's no easy to meet, but back then, that was a different world. She was honored in 1991 with the IPRA President's Award. Carolyn is most proud of her induction to the Illinois State Hall of Fame in 2014. She was nominated for the Tri-City Family Services Barth Award in 2015. In 2016, you didn't miss a beat. <laughs> you were also honored with the prestigious Robert Arts Lifetime Achievement Award. Carolyn celebrated her 25th year of service at Fox Valley Special Rec back then in 2017. So not only has Carolyn been recognized locally for her efforts in the field, but on a national level too. In 1989, she received the Leadership and Service Award for, uh, by the National Therapeutic Association. In 1987, she received the Presidential Award by National Therapeutic Recreation Society. The list goes on. Carolyn has served on many committees, both on the local and national level, including the Illinois Recreation Therapy Association Exploratory Task Force. I'll try to say that 10 times. <laughs> she has served on the IPRA Board of Directors in 2010. Sir, with you back then. Uh, she has been a member of the National Therapeutic Recreation Association and served on the NRPA. So, not IPRA, NRPA National Certification Board. She's also served in the Illinois Therapeutic Recreation Section. Carolyn, you have been giving the gift of your time and passion for the last 43 years. The Batavia Park District would like to reciprocate <coughs> by honoring you with a gift that's as special as you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, it's going to be hard not to come to work. 
Um, You're not going to show us what it, it is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's oh, really oh, oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I remember now picking that out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful bracelet that will be always fondly remembered by the Tavian Park Board and staff and community and all the participants. <coughs> you know, I said to somebody, I don't know what I'm going to do on May 1st when I wake up. I've been working since I've been 16 years old. You know, I was one of eight children that lived on a farm and my dad didn't sit still if we weren't out there doing something. You know? <laughs> like when I wake up on May 1st, like, what am I going to do? <laughs> I do have, I do have plans that I would ask by Sid Sklar, who used to be a former employee of ours, he is now head of the Recreation Department at the University of St. Francis, so I'm going to mm -hmm. teach a class for him. Oh, 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 oh. Recreation. So oh. at least I'll keep my hands a little bit in the in the field and um, be able to continue to do what I love. So other than that, it's going to be hopefully a lot of family time. My daughter graduates from college on May 11th. Yeah. My oldest son gets married on October 5th, and there's a few activities in between those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have plenty to do. And, um, so, and then I got to teach my class in the fall. So, um, I think there'll be lots to do, but I am cool. greatly to my team and um, all the people that we serve. They are really, truly special friends. So, thank you all very, very much. Well, you are more than welcome. Okay. So I have a few words and I'd like to take a short recess. So um, Carolyn, on behalf of, um, of the citizens of Batavia, I want to thank you for your passion and your continued support for those with special needs. Um, it's rare you find someone whose character um, is implicit in everything they say and do, and you're one of those people. And um, I also, you know, remember when Fox Valley Special Rec was a little smaller than it is now. Mm -hmm. And it really is in, in large part to you and your passion and service that has allowed it to grow and serve more, more people in our communities um, who really need those services. And your um, personality shows, and I think Fox, Fox Valley Special Rec will always, in my mind, be known as your um, uh, institution, only because it's part of your personality that it really has made it what it is today. So I want to thank you. Those are probably the most kind words that we've ever heard of. <laughs> so we're going to take a little break now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my daughter gave me a plaque a couple years ago and said, you know, um, if you never, you know, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Exactly. And I don't think I've ever worked. I really haven't. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love doing what I do and feel very blessed. I was at Illinois State on Friday for Women in Leadership. They had asked me to come back to help facilitate the table. And, and I said to these young students, I said, oh, you know, I'm very fortunate. It doesn't happen very often where you can find what you want to do your sophomore year in college and do it every day since mm -hmm. then. You know, I was very blessed, and I would wish that on everyone because this has been a wonderful, wonderful time. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Well, we have a little cake, so we'll take a little recess. Um, April 16th meeting at uh, 7.58. So next item on the agenda is uh, 14B, Flag Day Memorial Monument Project Update. Dan? Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Dan Heckel, and I'm a proud Batavia resident for only the last two years, because uh, before that I was in Bartlett. I was a proud Bartlett resident before that. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to share my passion and, uh, and give you guys an update. It's been a little while since you guys probably heard a little bit of the updates, and um, after our flags and flannel, I'll give you an update on that. Um, but I'm Dan Heckel, and I always tell people I grew up in Aurora, right? Because when you tell them you came from Moosehart, there's always a little bit of a story involved, and it's a little <laughs> easier to say from Aurora. But when my wife and I were dating in college out of Obanzi, um, we always sort of joked. It's like, well, we'll never move to Geneva. We'll never move to Aurora, said my wife. And so we've always sort of said, well, Batavia's a great place to land. And so that's why we're in Batavia. And uh, like I said, I'm a proud resident. I love riding my bike downtown and love the parks in the area. And so it's great. Um, 
I'm involved in the Flag Day Monument. About a year ago, a friend of mine came up and said, hey, we've got this Fox Valley Patriotic Organization. We would love your help on this committee to help bring this Flag Day Monument downtown Batavia. And I said, that's great. And so as we were getting this thing rolling, the marketing people asked, well, what's your story? And you know, my wife's the marketer, not me. I said, well, I love the American flag. And so the real story is that my dad came over in 1969 from Germany and uh, saw, saw America as an opportunity to make something better of himself. He came over as an engineer for uh, uh, Anchor Brush. So that's how uh, my father came over here and then a few years later, my sister came along, I came along, long story short, I'm here in Batavia. And so the Flag Day Monument is something that's really close to me because ever since my dad painted the American flag on the, the uh, garage door that my mom really didn't want there, but my dad was really proud of it. Um, you know, it's, it, for us, it's always been a unifying, uh, uh, comforting s symbol icon for all of us. So that's why I'm involved in the Flag Day Monument and I'm a part of this Flag Day, uh, the Fox Valley Patriotic Organization. Um, I will take the pointer if I could. Is that all right? Oh, gosh. No. Okay. All right. So, um, raise your hand if you remember the initial, uh, initial uh, presentation and you remember the science behind it, because I will cut the, uh, the details. The answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so everybody knows where it's going. Anybody have questions on where it's going? Downtown, across from City Hall, Patriot Park, right? Um, you can remember all the details with the science, the uh, flagpole as the sundial. Um, and my, my focus here is um, from my past, I, I am very proud of Batavia and I had to travel all over the world doing what I was doing previously. So um, whenever I bring people to my house from out of the country, um, I am very proud to have them walk downtown, see my community. You know, I obviously go downtown and show them the Shedd Aquarium and all the rest of the, the planetarium and all that. But having this downtown Batavia is going to bring people from all over the region that find the flag a unifying icon. So again, bringing businesses, bringing people, schools. I was talking to some people in Naperville the other day about the fact that I'd love to see school buses, you know, five or six school buses with a ton of kids just walking off and then interview or, or going around the the monument and talking about the science, talking about the memories that, that it invokes. And so that's really why I'm involved, all right? Um, so again, a um, couple big dates, obviously. Flag Day 2020 um, is when it's gonna be dedicated. So up until then, we have a lot of work to do. And so the updates for some of the money, all right? So. Uh, the total project is approximately $940,000, and that includes an endowment fund. Uh, $340,000 has been committed by donors. $232,000 has already been received. Uh, $315,000 is out in asks for individuals and groups, organizations. There's still about $85,000 in leads existing in potential donations from the smaller private, um, private people. Uh, there are still $200,000. Uh, 240,000 unique naming opportunities that are being presented. Um, the big thing that we're really pushing right now is that there's 10,000 bricks for sale, right? Almost 100 have already been sold. And uh, we're, we aim for selling 1,500 uh, for $150, 625 at $300, and the 375 at $500. So it's at 65% profit. If we sell 2.4 million bricks, It'll be about 1.6 million in profit, so we should sell 208 bricks a month. That's all. <laughs> all right. So, and honestly, it only make, it only comes out to 20 bricks per month per board member. So it's not too bad. Um, so, long story short, that's what we're doing as board members. That's what we're doing throughout the community. I'm presenting at Rotaries, Kiwanis, and uh, Boy Scout troops. Anybody that will listen about the program and the and the, the project. So, um, that's one of the things I do. Um, so as we mentioned, um, you know, 340 is committed by donors, and 232 has already been received. Did any of you guys go to the Flags and Flannel event over at Abbey Farms? If you hadn't, it was a really fun event. Um, Joanne Spitz, Kathy McNally, and a whole crew of people that really helped run the, 
Um, the community dinner downtown Batavia did an amazing job and we netted 75, almost $75,000. Wow. So that was a huge drop in the bucket, right? So that was awesome. Um, so again, uh, that's a little bit of the dollars and cents updates. Um, again, flag day, June 14th, 2019, we plan on releasing the uh, contractor information, um, the award of the contract for building it, um, and then hopefully um, you, guys, you guys can stop by between 6 and 9 p.m. and uh, enjoy some of the flag day monument, or flag day uh, event activities. So um, this shows you a little bit of the bricks, if anybody's interested, and I have some forms with me, and then this is some of the board members, um, and then the social media that we have available. So as we were talking, um, Alan J. Lynch is a uh, Medal of Honor recipient, and uh, it's, it's amazing when you meet the guy, he's just like Uncle Al. So it's uh, amazing that Batavia has such a good connection to somebody as special as he is. Um, any questions? Lord, any questions? I just really appreciate you coming out tonight and sharing a little more with us. It's yeah. getting exciting, getting closer, yeah. right? And if you have some uh, some uh, forms, I'd like to take a few. Yeah, I'll leave that behind with everybody. That'd be great. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you for your time. Great, Thank and you then, time and attention. Um, actually, though, there's going to be a water element too, correct? Where yes. It's yeah, it's different colored like water uh, water feature, oh. and so it's uh, it's really exciting to have that out there. Like as a red, white, and blue. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a splash card. Yep. I was just talking yeah. to a company is that uh, is actually going to be it's working on this. Like it's a, no, it's a it's like spring fountain. It's, like oh. it's like a stream of oh, water. Okay. It's it's water. Thing. So, so Kluber's working on the electric oh. water. Electric oh. design for that. Like, it's sort of really, there's a lot of okay. Batavia folk working on this. But the part that I was really excited about is that we had people, um, we have actually Ira Hayes' cousin in Naperville that is going to be donating money for the office that uh, raises the Iwo Jima flag um, for any Marines. Anyway. So um, uh, it's amazing how many people in this region are connected to a lot of these great stories. So. That's fantastic. And Dan, the size has changed a little bit since we last saw it. What was the final size? I want to say it was... In terms of height, too. Yeah. So um, I want to say it was 40. Because... Uh, 40 feet in diameter, and then the height, uh, the highest point is about eight foot, and then the lowest point at the beginning of the, um, the helix. Thank you, the helix. <laughs> uh, starts just under five foot, about okay. four and a half feet. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing to see that, that uh, growth from 2.6 million all the way around to 310 million. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting, it's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. So. Well, thanks for coming out, Dan. We appreciate I will you, it. Um, more forms and then yeah, uh, super. cards too. So thank you. Again thank, for you. Your time. thank you. Thanks for sharing your passion. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. How big is this trip? Do you have to stay? No, thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, Carolyn. Thank you. We'll see you next week. See you around. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next item on the agenda is our 15A Capital Development Plan Progress Report. And there is some progress to report this week. <laughs> <laughs> we are, uh, uh, well, as Eric said, the snow kind of threw everybody into a tizzy. Um, the work, uh, landscaping work on the East Side Center parking lot was going to begin. Uh, that appears that it probably won't this week um, as they got pushed back and pushed back in other jobs. Um, hopefully we will see some uh, activity there as they begin to grade out uh, the uh, islands and the lawn area and get uh, things seated and blanketed uh, and the plant material in. Um, Eastside Center Playground, I just this afternoon late got an email that said that the railings, not the fence, but the railings uh, should be going in next week. Uh, so that will be a, a nice step forward um, and we will begin uh, seeing a little more activity there. They have to wait until we really get into the warmer weather to do the uh, coloring of the wall, of course, so that's kind of temperature uh, sensitive, so we're going to be holding off on that. Um, 
was up at Memorial this afternoon with our landscape architect folks, and uh, there is actually playground equipment already coming out of the ground, so it's really nice. They've got uh, a really good start on the two to five year old side, and the red, white, and blue is really cool looking. Um, and so that's going, Joan Tometa has not started yet, they kind of need it to dry up a little bit, the access to that playground requires them to drive across a portion of the park and it will be really nasty if, I mean it's going to get torn up, but it will be worse if they do it now. Um, our East Center, East Side Center community, the building renovation, uh, the bid releases tomorrow morning uh, in the paper, so if there's anybody out there that is interested, please, uh, it is on the BFA. BHFX uh, plan room. That's hard to say really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, FX? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what you said. <laughs> yeah. Um, we received uh, late Friday, too late to put it in the packet, um, a probable cost estimate from Williams Architects. Um, we weren't far off. Um, their estimates uh, $856,856. Mm -hmm. um, and we are going to see how close we come in with that. I think our budget was 780000 So the 856 has, uh, is 10% uh, contingency in that. So um, we're gonna, I think we're gonna be right, right on. As we get good bids, we've been getting good <coughs> bids um, this year. And then tonight, later on, we're gonna be uh, approving the contract for the Big Woods project to start, and we'll get the contracts out in the next day or two. And, uh, We'll be able to get that project going. So we have got a lot of stuff going on. Wow. Are we still on track with everything starting right when free school finishes? And um, I think we are yeah. pretty much <laughs> going to be right on. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's going to be some periods of time where the kids won't be able to be on the playground because of the stuff that's going to be happening near the playground. And then oh, when I we mean on the inside. Yeah. Oh, on the inside. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Well, we won't know that until we get into the project. <laughs> okay, Is there right. change orders? Or? Okay, all right. Our schedule, we're going to start on the 10th of June, and we're to be done by the uh, end-ish of August. So, uh -huh. yeah, they start the 4th, I think, 4th of September. So uh -huh. you, you have the most experience with working in schools. It can be... It's be a walk in the park. Yeah. Awesome. There we go. Pun intended. Weather shouldn't be a problem. It's all inside. So. Good yeah, you we'll don't need good out. weather for the roof. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I'll let you <laughs> go. I did sixty million dollars in that same time frame, so I think you got. Oh wow, well, we've got yeah. Just Mother Nature's got to be on our side. That's right. Mm -hmm. Great. So thank you. Good update. Thanks. Yep. So uh, next item on the agenda is uh, the review of the intergovernmental agreement, intergovernmental agreement between the City of Batavia and the Batavia Park District for Creek Improvements and Maintenance. So this is our first reading. I did read through some of this today and I do have some comments, so I'm going to encourage board members to read this because this is um, kind of an important thing that we're going to kind of co-obligate each other to do and the maintenance side I think is important, so I'd like you to provide any commentary back to uh, or questions back to Allison and then we'll I agree with the comment for 5A I uh, don't know what can be done but it's I don't know how what different wording it could be but it is right you know, um, we had a discussion with attorney Price uh, Allison and uh, Eric and I did mm -hmm. and we've got some assignments to get some information back to him so okay. that will go along with that Mm -hmm. section that you referenced yeah else pardon me Allison when would you like the um, comments back by um does the board feel like you can would a week and a half so a week from Friday be enough time yeah I think yeah, not, I, not for me I, think yeah. I read it already I, that's the one that I think is really stands out yep. by May. definitely so by um so I don't have my calendar with me today's the 16th first of May first of May Wednesday is, is May 1st. Does that work? That's what we can Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yep, because uh, the council, the whole, had a chance to review it and they didn't have any changes to it. Of course not. Well, they wouldn't. They'd... And um, <laughs> so we gave them it's what slanted. Dirk's changes were and I explained that our park board had not had a chance, you know, park board's getting a first blush at it like the council of the whole just did. Mm -hmm. So now we're finally at equal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, terms where council the whole saw yeah, it, you've sure. seen it, yeah. and now we're ready to make any kind of changes we can. 
Okay. So just in general, is this, uh, so this is the current one in force? Right. Mm -hmm. This is brand new. This is a new one. Brand new. There is no agreement yeah. in force. So oh, we okay. actually, and we did budget for Woodland Hills um, in this year's budget. So we are splitting that with the city. So really, we wanted to have an intergovernmental agreement that shows cooperation between you know, the, the cost sharing between the city and the park district for the engineering efforts to improve the stormwater. So is this in? So we're putting in writing what kind of currently happens now. Informal. What we're planning on having happen. Yeah, right. We haven't gone through with it yet. Oh, I know, but what currently happens last year is what this kind of is explaining. Is that correct? Well, what the plan is, this this so you've uh, never this work you've has never worked with the state the city on this kind of stuff before. Mm -hmm. Not in this not in this site, in nor this area, with yeah. this type of project. Correct. Right, and I just wanted to formalize it to get it into an IGA, no, that's fine. so we feel better about it. I'm just trying to is this brand new or is this kind it's of brand new? Brand I'm new. reading some things. I'm thinking, how is that going to work? How is that going to work? <laughs> yeah. But if it's been working for the last 20 years, like it's it's been working. <laughs> it's no, brand I mean, new. No, I think your question is valid. Yeah. How's that going to work? This is brand new. How is this going to work? How is this going right. to work? Right. And that's why I feel free to send me any of your questions, right. comments, concerns, and more. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Or just a show and going, what? Yeah. How is going to work? Yeah. It's going to work. Does this mean? With the city, and we love working with them. So, um, but this one is a pretty big project, so yeah. we needed to make it it's a little bit cleaner. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like this. IGA can be a model where we can add to the addendum. Right now, the Woodland Hills project would be the first of this project. Right. But if there are other kind of creeks or like waterways that would also apply, we can just add it to the uh, um, the addendum. Because initially, the city wanted to um, define every single area that's shared that we would, you know, go in on it together and um, explain to. Attorney Price, that you know, that concerned me because that would tie our board and our budget to what priorities the the city, the city deemed appropriate, yeah, exactly. and it wasn't a true joint agreement then. Mm -hmm. and, and they actually have m many more of these kinds of areas than we do that they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, although we do have a number that run through our parks, certainly on the east side of town. I know that they are hoping to have this approved by the council. That, by the full council on the 6th of May. So that's what I was told. Okay, well, I think you're up. we're on good. Yeah. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is the award of the contract for Big Woods Park and the installation of asphalt path at Payne Woods Park. So this is a combined bid for one contract? The combined is one contract, correct. Okay. So I entertain a motion to award the contract for the renovation of Big Woods Park and the installation of an asphalt path at Payne Woods Park <coughs> to the most responsive, responsible bidder, Hacienda Landscaping, Inc., for the sum of $315,762. So, second. Motion by Gray, second by Tillman. Any further discussion? I think that it's great that you figured out how to get such a huge cost savings factored into and yeah it path. was it was really a, a pretty much a no-brainer when there was that much asphalt work we could bundle it up yeah, and sure. it, it contractor doesn't really care that it's two sites and they're not that far apart so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's a nice deal mm -hmm. and because of that 42 percent cost savings that's why we may be coming to you later to ask if we can spend that extra well, savings on the mm -hmm. civic center gym right any other questions? <laughs> and you've, have, you've worked with Hacienda Landscaping? Hacienda is yeah. the company that's doing the two playgrounds yeah. right now. Yeah. So, yeah. yes. Okay. And we have in the past. Mm -hmm. We nice. have in the past. All right. Shall I call the roll? Gray. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Riley. Aye. Dorsey. Aye. Callahan. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Underway tomorrow. So we do not have an executive session tonight, so uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn at 8.18. So moved. Second. Motion by Tillman, second by Gray. Sorry, Tillman. Damn. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. We will see you next month. <laughs>